Hey everyone, welcome to Phone Arena's in-depth video review of the Microsoft Kin 1 and Kin 2, two devices that are going to be available shortly with Verizon Wireless. As you can see, they are Windows Phone and also uh, in conjunction with Verizon Wireless and manufactured by Sharp. But we've been hearing about these two devices for quite some time, even since the fall. And they're they're actually replacing the Sidekick line, which uh, plays to the strengths of the uh, hip and young crowd. But the Kin device sports a unique user interface that kind of has its uh, design elements with uh, Windows Phone 7. But uh, its biggest aspect, again, is the social networking crowd out there. So we'll see if uh, these two devices can live up to those expectations. So we'll get right into it and we're going to talk about the uh, Kin 1 here, which is actually the more compelling device out of the two. That's just because of its untraditional form factor. It looks like a hockey puck at first with its rounded uh, edges on top, but we like the fact that it's relatively compact just because holding the hand, you really don't notice it too much. It's also lightweight and it's well-rounded um, as far as uh, design goes. Uh, the material that they use is the black plastic all around, which for the rear has this uh, soft touch feel to it but the uh, front portion on the touch screen it has uh, an acry acrylic overlay on top of it that makes it really glossy which tracks fingerprints and also smudges but it does feel good and we do like the choice of materials they use for this unfortunately though there is you know um, a slight wiggle with the device uh, when you wiggle the uh, top portion when it's open but when it's closed it feels really really durable and we do like the uh, design of it it's something quite different out there so the first thing we're greeted to when we power on the Kin 1 is its 2.4 inch QVJ display which is ample enough in size but unfortunately the lack of real estate makes it a little bit also tough to navigate. On top of that the uh, the uh, glossy finish of the uh, device makes it really difficult to see what's on screen especially in outdoor, outdoor settings with direct sunlight. Colors are pretty good. Uh, they have a really good tone, pretty vi vibrant but text though, especially smaller text, they're a little bit more faint, a little bit you know, fuzzy or hazy just because of the uh, lack of a higher resolution. Right below the touch screen, you just have the single dedicated hardware button to go back. If you click it once, if you hold down for a couple seconds, it brings you back to the home screen. On the left hand side, you have the micro USB port, the volume volume rocker, and on the right, you have the um, the the uh, power, dedicated power button and also the shutter key, which is kind of awkwardly placed because it's found closer towards the rear of the phone, and it makes just for an awkward position uh, when trying to use it. And on top, you have also the three and a half millimeter headset jack and the for the speakerphone and on the rear you have the 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash and when you remove the back cover it just gives you access to the uh, battery compartment itself. There's actually a pretty good sliding mechanism with the device when you open it up. Now you're greeted to the uh, four row QWERTY keyboard which is surprisingly the better of the two just because it takes advantage of all the real estate on the surface. They're oval in shape and they're slightly raised from the surface and they also offer a really good decent tactile feel to them. Now the only problem is that it has only one green button to input numbers or characters. We would like to see another one on the other side. And the space bar button, if you click on the left or the right side, it has a pretty good feel but right in the middle it has a double press to it. Aside from that, we're pretty happy with the experience on the Kin 1. As far as the Kin 2 is concerned, uh, when we first look at it, it kind of reminded us of the uh, Palm Pre in the close, when it's closed, obviously. It has a similar look, same size, but we feel that the uh, Kin 2 is a little bit better constructed than it. Now, it's your typical slate form factor with the slide out QWERTY keyboard. The materials they use is the same as the Kin 1, black plastic all around. The top portion with the touch screen, it has this acrylic overlay with it, which gives it a really glossy look. On the rear, you have the uh, soft touch feeling material, which does well to uh, prevent scratches and smudges. Uh, it's a little bit heavier too than the Kin 1, definitely noticed the weight. But it's nothing really, uh, you know, different as far as a uh, design. It's typical of any other touchscreen phone we've seen before. But uh, it does feel durable in the hand, and we do like the uh, workmanship on it. Seeing that it's the uh, bigger brother of the Kin 1, the uh, Kin 2 actually offers a little bit better specs. Now the first thing you notice is the uh, 3.4 inch HVGA touchscreen display, which is actually a lot more detailed. You could you can make out some fine details, especially in the text, a lot better quality. Um, it also suffers from the same problems as the Kin 1, which is the glossy finish to it. it makes it difficult to see, especially in direct sunlight. Right below it is the dedicated hardware button, which is uh, press once to go back and hold it down to uh, go back to the uh, home screen. On the top portion of the phone, you have the 35 millimeter headset jack, the notch for the speaker, and on the right-hand side, you have dedicated power button, 
the volume rocker, which is a pretty good tactile feel to them. And the uh, shutter key, again, it's placed towards the rear of the phone um, and makes for some awkward positions when trying to use it. Just because when you you are trying to take a photo, just the placement of your fingers, you have a tendency, tendency of actually moving the touch screen up as you're pressing down with it. And also, it ha it's a little bit more stiff than the other buttons. And on the rear, you have the 8 megapixel camera, which is a little bit better than the 5 megapixel one on the Kin 1 with the LED flash. It has also the ability to shoot in 720p. And you have the battery when you remove the back cover. And the bottom portion, you'll find just the uh, micro USB port. And it's also worth noting that this device has 8 gigabytes of storage as opposed to the 4 gigabytes found on the Kin 1. And just like the uh, Kin 1, it, the Kin 2 offers a pretty good sliding mechanism when you open and close it. It reveals the uh, three-row QWERTY keyboard, which is surprisingly not as good as the uh, the Kin 1, even though it's a little bit more spacious, but they don't take advantage of all the real estate. Um, and they're circular in nature, a little bit stiff to when you touch them, and they're also slightly raised, so a pretty good distinction, but we feel that the Kin 1 offered a better experience. It suffers from the same problem, seeing that it has one single green button, and that same issue with the space bar. Kin interface is quite unique in itself because it has some design elements that are taken from Windows Phone 7 thanks to the uh, you know, large panels and uh, grid-like view of the uh, user interface. So basically navigating is pretty smooth for the most part. And there are some slight instances of lag, but as you can see, it's quite responsive as there's uh, kinetic scrolling going on. But there are three main uh, panels on the uh, device itself. The first one is the leftmost, which is your apps, which basically gives you all the access to the commonly used applications such as the browser, the email, and the and Zoom music player. The middle one is your Kin, the uh, Kin Loop um, home screen, which is basically the main one. Um, and what it does, it it aggregates all your content from your different social networking accounts. So for example, you have some wall postings on here, some tweets from friends, and these are based on your favorites that you've selected on the phone. On top of that, you could even uh, change, you know, your status on Facebook or even uh, tweet something on Twitter. So it just gives you a lot of access without having to launch a separate application. And finally, you have your favorites. So basically, uh, out of all their friends, let's say, for example, you have Facebook, you could choose your friends that you want to stay connected with the most. So you'll have it all on here. If you click a person, for example, you'll be able to actually, uh, you know, view their information on the device itself. So you could even uh, check out their Facebook and their wall without having to load up the uh, the the uh, web browser itself, and it makes for a pretty interesting you know concept and very different from what's out there. And uh, it's again pretty much responsive for the most part, but there are some instances of lag. Now, sending messages on Kin is quite simple. You can just run the uh, messaging application directly from the uh, from the applications panel. From there, you could select new. And you'll be able to choose either your favorites, some of the contacts in your favorites, or you could select your, you know, uh, manually put in a phone number. Um, unfortunately, though, there, there are no on-screen QWERTY keyboards on either the Kin 1 or Kin 2, so you have to actually use the uh, QWERTY to do that. Um, there's an interesting concept with uh, the Kin interface, though. So, for example, if you wanted to, uh, you know, send or share some content with friends, you could simply click and drag let's say for example this uh, this uh, this Facebook post another one right here and you could drop it into the kin the uh, kin spot which is right there at the bottom and let's say you want to send it to a person you could send it to another person all that all those uh, posts that we just selected you click the kin spot it shows you all the stuff that you want to share and to who you want to share it to and you could directly either upload that those, those things to Facebook or you could send it as a text message or an email now emails though you'll be able to really simply set it up um, it, you just put in your username and password password and from there you'll be given uh, it'll automatically be set up so really quite simple and easy to use you can have multiple addresses and the only thing we notice that you can't reply using a different email email account so for example if you get one from Gmail and you have a Yahoo mail account you can't reply uh, to the Gmail email uh, with a Yahoo account as far as the uh, web browsing experience on the either kin devices kin 1 kin 2 um, it pages took a long time to actually load up uh, an extended amount of time although it has support for like uh, pinching pinch pinch gestures to zoom in or zoom out as you can see it takes a little bit of time for the phone to actually re-render the uh, page to the appropriate zoom levels so it does make it kind of hinders the experience 
once the page is fully loaded scrolling isn't isn't that much of a problem as you can see it's pretty smooth but if you scroll it really fast it's going to have a hard time rendering everything on screen now, thankfully it has a great zoom integration the experience is pretty good when it comes to music you could uh, for example here we're going to show you the zoom pass and as you can see the interface has a lot of nifty transition effects that really animate the uh, overall experience so right now we're just going to pick an album here show you what it looks like it gives you an option uh, all the uh, available songs uh, what the Zoom Pass does is basically live stream 3G in songs over 3G onto the device. So it's pretty neat. You could even download them if uh, you don't have 3G present. Uh, so you could use them uh, when you're not connected to the network. As far as the sound quality in the speakerphone, though, it's pretty good. Uh, although there were some sharp tones to it, um, it was quite manageable, to say the least. Between the Kin 1 and Kin 2, the Kin 2 actually offers a better experience when it comes to viewing videos. That's just because of its higher resolution display. So uh, we're going to show you just a quick clip here about how smooth it runs uh, the videos here. So we're just going to run this one here to show you. And you can see it runs really smooth. There's a lot of great detail to it. Colors are quite vivid. And to access the on-screen function, you simply just tap anywhere on screen and it pops up just like that. But it's a great experience and it's really good for watching videos. So we're really, really surprised by the Kin 2's performance in the camera quality department. Uh, thanks to its 8 megapixel camera, it produced some stellar shots uh, with great detail and also great color that matched up perfectly. Um, but the one thing that we did notice is just when you take photos, the placement of the button is kind of awkward. So it made it a little bit difficult to actually take the shot just because you had a tendency to actually move the uh, screen up to expose the QWERTY keyboard as you hold down the uh, shutter key. Indoor shots with the Kin 2 came out average to say the least. Uh, best use when it's four feet away with the flash because anything closer will be overexposed. And it really didn't work too well after six feet. As far as the uh, Kin 1 goes, quality was also decent thanks to its 5 megapixel camera good quality and pretty good color tones as well but indoor shots again same same thing they tended tended to be a little bit darker uh, over, over, for the most part and uh, it just kind of the flash really didn't work um, past six feet but anything closer than that again will be overexposed Multimedia centric individuals out there will probably gravitate towards the uh, Kin 2 just because the, its ability to shoot in 720p. Now, it does offer stuff like image stabilization, which is great for fast moving objects, but we did notice that it lacked any focus. So, if an object moves closer into view, it kind of looked out of focus. But uh, detail in the shot in the video capture was pretty good. Same thing as the frame rate, it was steady, but not, not the best out there. Luckily though, the uh, Kin 1 offered pretty much a, a little bit better experience as far as uh, frame rate goes. It was pretty much smooth, really quick actually, although it didn't have as much detail as the Kin 2, but it's still respectable on its own. Surprisingly, we also had a pretty good experience with the phone call quality in both the Kin 1 and Kin 2. Voices on both ends were distinct and clear. There wasn't any noticeable um, background noise or static to ruin the experience. But when we switched to the uh, speakerphone on the Kin 1, it was kind of lacking in power and at the same time, it did sound somewhat muffled. Where the Kin 2, when we switched when we switched over to the uh, speakerphone, we did notice some sharper tones to it and it had a tendency to slightly crackle. Um, but the experience was overall decent on, b on both devices. When it comes to just uh, battery life, uh, we were just really surprised with the Kin 1 actually. Uh, we used it uh, for just one day, one full day and it only still has 75% of the battery left. Where the Kin 2 though, unfortunately, after one day's use already requires a battery charge. But then again, um, being they're always connected you know, online and connected to uh, the cloud services, it does make for you know, a pretty decent offering to say the least. So there you have it. Um, the Kin devices are quite unique on their own, although the hardware might not be as appealing or innovative, but you can find it definitely in the software that's running underneath the uh, the devices. Uh, the experience is, is pretty good as far as uh, social networking is, is available. It'll keep you connected to your friends. At the same time, these devices are always connected to the cloud. So any any uh, any uh, photo that you take, videos, or even text messages will automatically be saved where you can check them out in, in the, on Kin Studio online, which is a web-based uh, interface that you could use to uh, check out all your information and content. 
But in the end, though, um, it's there are sh some shortcomings. For example, the lack of uh, native applications such as a YouTube application or even a simple one like a calculator app that's missing. Uh, with no App Store in tow, it's going to be kind of difficult because those are some of the stuff that even some feature phones offer. But in the end, out of both devices, we'd probably say that the Kin 1 is a little bit more compelling just because of its uh, unique looking form factor. And it's a uh, quite usable uh, QWERTY keyboard. We prefer it over the uh, Kin 2. So if you'd like to learn more about these handsets or for all the latest cell phone reviews, new specs, or information, you can check us out at PhoneArena.com.